Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I vlog daily from my country since the start of this awful war with Russia to keep you updated on the things that we Ukrainians consider important. In my today's vlog, I would like to start with uh, the congratulations of those of you who celebrate today Easter. May it bring health and happiness to your loved ones and of course peace, but only after victory. In Ukraine, for a very long period of time, we wished each other peace, but today we wish it only after our victory. Because any other type of peace will mean just a pause in our relationship with Russia and Putin's regime. And we totally realized that after the things, the crime that, that Putin's regime has committed against humanity in Ukraine and against the normal civilized world, no other type of peace is acceptable only the peace after capitulation and fall of Putin's regime. And today in Ukraine we also have a holiday and we celebrate Palm Sunday. This year it is one week later than yours, so our Easter Orthodox Easter will be celebrated on the 24th of April. I am personally a supporter of this joint date and I do believe that pretty soon we will celebrate Easter with the majority of the Christian world. And Ukrainian traditions for the Palm uh, Sunday include blessing or baptizing of uh, willow branches. And uh, this is a tradition, I don't think it's very Christian, but it's very common here that after you bless these branches, you uh, <laughs> hit your friends and relatives when you meet them and you tell them, it's not me that is beating you, but it's a willow and soon Easter is coming, something like that. And it is believed that those places where you touch uh, with these blessed branches will stay healthy. So um, it is quite common when after we win and you come to Ukraine and you happen to come here during our Palm Sunday, don't be afraid if people will start beating you with the uh, willow. But perhaps this is an equivalent of a palm tree palm uh, leaves or something like that but anyway it's a very common ukrainian tradition i don't know about other countries who are our neighbors but in ukraine it's very typical and yes i did that <laughs> today and one of the questions that i also get pretty pretty often from you is the question about ukrainian families who also have relatives in uh, russia how are they what are their relations and so on well, I cannot be an expert in this question because personally I don't have relatives in Russia and I don't have friends in Russia. And it was always like that, maybe because of my location in the Western Ukraine, maybe because of my lifestyle and so on, but I never, I have never come across that close with people who are from Russia. And today it is much easier for me to speak about this topic like the way I feel. Uh, of course, uh, there are people who have relatives in Russia, there are people who worked there for a certain period of time, and perhaps the closer they are to the border, the more uh, relatives they have. Like, it's always like that. For example, I do have relatives in Poland and in Argentina. <laughs> you, uh, well, like, my father was born in Argentina, but he is from the Ukrainian family, and later they returned back to Ukraine. But uh, I, those people who live closer to other countries, this is very typical to have relatives abroad. And uh, to tell you the truth, from what I observe, these people who have relatives in Russia suffer a lot because they try to persuade their relatives. And in the majority of cases, their relatives do not believe them. This is a true tragedy. Or oh, my friend told me about one of his uh, relatives who lives in Kharkiv and that relative contacted his own mother who is somewhere in Russia uh, during the shellings when he was hiding in uh, the bomb shelter and his mother was persuading him that this is not war this is just a special operation something that is needed and he is mother uh, like claimed that he is a victim of Ukrainian propaganda uh, I don't know what happened like to the majority of uh, Russians because they are totally poisoned by 
the TV. I, I even think that in Ukraine, uh, not that many people get news from uh, TV. TV is still popular and it seems to me that uh, during our previous elections, there were some kind of uh, statistics that TV is still the main source of political influence in Ukraine, contrary to many European countries where it is already internet. But it was predicted that on the next elections in Ukraine, internet will also dominate. And in Russia, they are totally ruled by television and their television is censored. And of course, like the level of propaganda is unbelievable. And that's why many relatives who live in Russia do not believe their Ukrainian relatives. And it, very, it is very tragic because uh, the majority of those people who have relatives in Russia, they were more tolerant to Putin. They did not believe this war is possible. They were uh, like supporting some of the propaganda myths. And that's why um, for it is very difficult for them to continue that communication. And I know, I personally know lots of people who cut the ties because they don't see any opportunity to persuade these victims of propaganda. I have personally read some articles that it's not so easy uh, like to um, decode those zombies and it cannot be done on Facebook or in commands or elsewhere. It has to be a long period of rehabilitation and perhaps this is something that is needed. Of course, in Russia, there are some regions where many Ukrainians live and one of them is Siberia because many of them were sent away. And I do believe that in those uh, districts that are not very pro-Putin, that are still have preserved their individual thinking, it may be that they believe what is going on in Ukraine, but the majority choose to keep their eyes closed because I am convinced that in the times of internet, when you have access to all the information you want, despite censorship, despite other things, it's pretty easy to find uh, the information. And still they choose not to do that. And uh, once again, the, in Russian propaganda, they were drawing the myths that Kharkiv and other cities of the eastern Ukraine want to join Russia. But again, this is a total uh, fake because now we have in my city lots of people from Kharkiv who escaped the war, who escaped Russian regime and uh, who condemn Russians now and who want to, I don't know, quickly learn the Ukrainian language, something, a task they have never uh, put in front of them. Also, this very similar situation is in Crimea because still it is not that far away from the continental Ukraine, if you can say it, and they realize something very wrong is happening and lots of flats are sold and uh, you can like uh, see in their news that they have doubts already whether it is just a special operation or maybe it is a full-scale war and something totally wrong is happening. And I personally believe that uh, it is possible to return Crimea to Ukraine because, of course, this referendum was total fake. You cannot have referendum with just one question and soldiers standing in the hall. And, of course, we have lots of Crimean Tatars who stayed in Crimea and actually the fate of this uh, nation is very tragic because they were evac de deported, I'm sorry, they were deported from their uh, lands in Crimea by Stalin and later they managed to come back. They started building their houses, they did not manage to get the best lands on uh, close to the sea, but still they loved Crimea, it has lots of uh, Tartar uh, heritage and they are very pro-Ukrainian. Why? Well, like they are a beautiful nation, they have their own language and Ukrainians not being Nazis as Russians, we have always supported Crimean Tatars and oh, even in Lutsk they have their um, clubs and they practice their language, they have their national dances, food you can buy. For example, in my city, we also had the heritage of Karaims. If you know well, who, who are these, this is a very um, unique um, uh, nation of uh, uh, also Tatar origin, but they came here from, uh, um, 
I'm sorry, I don't know where from, <laughs> but they came here with the Duke of Duke Vitovtas many, many centuries ago, and they stayed here, and there are also many of them in Lithuania. So in general, Ukraine has very European attitude to various other nations that live on our territory, and it is just Russians that want to create Ukraine in their, to recreate Ukraine as a USSR. That is the only problem. I do want to repeat this phrase to explain everything like they use the word Nazi in a totally different meaning. And for Russian, every Ukrainian who does not want to be Russian is a Nazi. And in general, my country is very open, is very tolerant, especially if to compare us with the rest of the post-Soviet countries. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your subscriptions. Please feel free to give your requests and comments. Slava Ukraini!